All right, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to part three of lesson 11, where we are going to continue our talk on the, the, on the comparison between the inner join and outer join, and then we will get into some uh, actual real syntax so you can wrap your uh, hands around it and, and get uh, into the nitty-gritty about how to actually make this stuff a reality. So let's jump right to it. Let's move on uh, to a more useful topic, which is when to use the inner join versus the outer join. All right, so you've, we've already talked about inner and outer joins. Now, when should we use them? So it all depends, obviously, on the requirements that you're facing. Okay, um, whatever the the uh, the demands are from the boss or the demands are from the customer is when you would decide whether or not you'd want to use an inner join or an outer join. Okay, so here's two examples. First example is I want you to list all the users in the system which have filled out their address. Okay, list all the users in the system which have filled out their address. Example two, list all the details of the users in the system. All the details of the users in the system. So do you see how those two are similar in terms of what they're going to do, um, but but different in in two in one really key aspect. Okay, one of them says to only list the users that have filled out their address. It doesn't explicitly say only, but that's what it's getting at. That's the example. That's what the example is getting at. So example one, we would want to use an inner join, also known as just a join. Okay, if you hear someone say join, they mean inner join. Um, so we want to use a join as we would not want to include those users who have not yet filled out their address information. Okay, which makes sense. We want to list all the users in the system which have filled out their address, only those users which have filled out their address, which means this is an exclusive statement. We want to exclude um, some of the rows. We want to exclude the people who have not yet filled out their address. So a good way to exclude data is by using the inner join because that's exactly what the inner join is supposed to do. It excludes rows where there are no matches. So we would use the inner join. Now, in example two, you see here it says list all the details of the users in the system. Okay, uh, probably a better way to, to say that would be list all the details of all the users in the system. <clears throat> so in example two, we would want to use the left join or the left outer join as we would not want to omit any of the user rows just because they have not yet filled out their address information. Okay, does that make sense to you? We don't want to exclude any rows, any users, because we want to see all the users in the system, but we also want to see all the corresponding details for all the users in the system. So to do that, we would list out all the users based on a left join, and then their corresponding information, whichever information we could get, we would also list it with um, those corresponding rows for users. Okay, just like we already saw in the left outer join, we saw that uh, you know we saw all the users, which was user ID one and user ID two, which is T Page and J Doe. We saw all the users, and we also saw as much of the corresponding information that we could find about those users, which was the two rows for T Page, where T Page had two different addresses, and just a bunch of nulls for the address information for JDoe because JDoe didn't have any addresses. Okay, so the rule of thumb here is that the inner join is more restrictive and therefore it will omit results. So if you need to display all the possible results from a certain table, in this case a left-hand side table, then you should prefer to use the left join, okay, instead of the inner join. And again, when I said, uh, when I've been talking about all this about left join, the exact same thing can be said if you want to flip it around on its head. If you want to say right join, then you can use right joins and it just makes um, for a different uh, type of query because you're going to be getting information uh, from the right hand side table, excuse me, instead of the left hand side table. Make sense? It's the exact same concept that you just flip it around on its head. So let's get into syntax. And um, and that will help a little bit. Now I wrote down. I think that I just skip a slide there. Uh, no, apparently I wrote left outer join first. All right, let's talk about left outer joins first. Um, so what uh, what you can do for syntax here is is as follows. So this is the breakdown of the actual uh, database uh, schema. So we have the user table, which includes all the appropriate rows um, or columns, I should say, and the address table, which has all of its appropriate columns. Right, and then we have the uh, the link between the two tables, which is via the user ID, which exists on both tables. Um, it exists in the user table as the primary key, and exists in the address table as the foreign key. Okay, 
Again, this is just a relationship. We've talked about relationships. This is nothing new. So if you want to perform a left outer join, you will say select star from users. Well, the table name here is user. I should probably have said user without the S. Um, or rather, I probably should have named this one with, with an S. So don't get confused here. When I say users, I really mean this table here. Uh, select star from users. Left outer join address. Okay, so this is table A, table B. Um, left outer join address on address.userid equals users.userid. Okay, so there's two or three things going on here. The first thing that's going on is we are establishing which side is the left-hand side table. The left-hand side table is the table that appears first in the syntax. So, so since we say select star from users, that means that users is going to be the main table, the main focus of our um, query, which means it's going to be the left-hand side table. And we call it the left table because this is the data that will appear first when the two tables are merged together. It will appear, the data from this select star from users, the uh, row, uh, rows and columns that we get, are going to be on, appearing first and they're going to be appearing on the left-hand side um, of the resulting uh, result set. Okay, so the, the um, table that appears first is going to be the left-hand side table, and the table that appears second is the right-hand side table. Okay, left, right. Fairly straightforward stuff. Now, the second thing that's going on is we are specifying the left outer join. Now, uh, conversely, or, or uh, in, in, um, uh, in tandem with this statement, you could also just say left join. Okay, these, are, these do the exact same thing. There's no difference between these two statements other than the fact that uh, SQL, um, or rather MySQL, has uh, the extra word for the people who like to use the term left outer join, as opposed to the people who say left join. Okay, so I'll say this with confidence. More people say left join than, than left outer join, because the, the term left outer join has two extra syllables, and programmers are lazy. Okay, so um, people prefer to say left join and prefer to type out left join as opposed to left outer join. So from now on, from now forward, you'll probably just see me type in left join because, like I said, I'm a programmer, therefore I am lazy. So, um, okay, left table, right-hand side table. We are, uh, we are telling it what kind of join to perform. So we have select start from users, left join address, and then we specify the relationship. Okay, this is mandatory. We must specify the relationship. We must specify on which columns we will be joining these two tables together. Okay, and since we have established that it's going to be user ID on both sides, user ID in the address table and user ID in the user table, then it makes perfect sense as to why we say address.userID equals users.userID. Okay, we could even flip these around. You could even type in users.userID equals address dot user id it doesn't matter which you know way you want to put um the resulting um uh, you know primary key versus foreign key really doesn't matter both do the exact same thing all it wants is the uh the connection between the two tables that's all the uh, the, the, the database wants from you so and there you go once you type that out you can run the statement and then you'll get exactly the results that you saw from the previous slides where we got the for the left or for the left join it was three rows Okay, let me go back and just show you uh, where that was. Da, da, da. So these are the three rows that we got from the left join. So if we were to type in that SQL statement, this would be the re uh, resulting uh, result set. Three rows, etc., uh, etc., et where you have the nulls. Okay, cool. So inner join is, uh, well, it's the pretty much the exact same thing, only it's using the word inner instead of outer or left outer. So... Um, same data set, same schema, same user and address table, uh, same typo. Should have put an S on user here, but I didn't uh, because I'm referring to users here. So whenever I say users, I actually mean this table. Um, so select star from users, inner join, address on address.userid, users.userid. Exactly the same syntax. The only difference is the word inner join as opposed to left join. Okay, and like I said, you can also abbreviate this, and I will be from probably from now on, uh, to just saying join. Okay, inner join and just saying join are the exact same thing. Exact same rules apply. Inner join, that's 
two more syllables than just saying join. Since we are lazy, we just say join. Okay, so select star from users, join address on the relationship that exists already, which is the user ID, uh, foreign key, primary key thing. And again, you could flip these around if you like. You could have put users.userID here equals address.userID over here. Okay, but I should say, I should explicitly say a scenario that does not make sense is you put user or users dot user ID equals users dot user ID. If you're doing that twice and you're just joining to the same table, that then it won't know what the heck you're talking about. You need to specify two different tables here uh, in order to properly make this work. Cool. So I think that uh, sums it up. Let me see. Yep, that's the last slide I have. So um, now there you go. You have uh, the 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 syntax and the, the breakdown, the framework for being able to join data together between two tables. You learned how to, well, what types of joins there were. You learned about the inner join, the outer join, and the cross join. You learned that the outer join has subtypes of left outer join and right outer join, which we can abbreviate to just left join and right join. We learned that the inner join and the uh, left join are the two most commonly used. You learn that the right join uh, is just the same thing as a left join. It's just uh, the mirror image. You just flip it around. The concepts still apply. You just need to be flipped on its head. Um, and you learn that the, the inner join is more restrictive. So if you want to be in a situation where you, where you want to restrict your results, you would use the inner join. But if you want to be in a situation where you need to see all of the different, um, all the different rows from a certain table, as well as as much joined information as you can, then you use the left join or the outer join, uh, joins, I should say. That's when you should prefer the use of those. Okay, so there you go. That's joins for you. I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Um, I don't want to give it away just yet, but it's going to be a good one. So see you then. Bye for now and happy learning.